I want to show you one thing over here, all right, which I promise I would. Look at this option over here. You can see this uh, uh, like a greater than green sign over here. If you click on that uh, over here, sorry, if you, uh, sorry, uh, it's uh, to, to its left. Just click on the theorem over here. If you click on that, it's going to be flipped to non-theorem. Click, click on that again, it becomes theorem. So that means this particular predicate over here, C is a member of M1, can either be a theorem or it may not be a theorem. When it is not a theorem, that means it is it is an axiom. On the other hand, when it is not when it is actually a theorem, that means it should be proved. All right. Let me just show you what the difference is. If I keep this one not theorem, that means it is an axiom. Let me put a comment over here. So to the left of the green arrow over here, you can actually flip between not theorem and theorem. To the right of the uh, the green arrow over there, you can put some comments. Okay. Not Theorem means an axiom. Theorem means a proof is needed. All right, there's a comments over here. All right, and make sure you save uh, Control S to save it. When it is an axiom, it was simply nothing to be proved. You can see there's no proof obligation over here. On the other hand, if I click on this to flip it to be a theorem, and make sure you save it so it will be reflected to the prover. If I say Control S to save it, as soon as I have done that, you can see under proof obligation over here, if I click on that over here, there is something over here for me to prove. And you can see in the rodent over here, whenever you see THM over here, that means it is some theorem the prover is trying to discharge for you, but somehow it failed to do so. Mathematically speaking, if you simply simply want to prove that C is a member of M1, you need some hypothesis to help you. But at the moment, we don't have any other hypothesis. And, and in, uh, the, uh, the answer to your doubt would be, C should not be, uh, C being a member of the M1 should not be a theorem. It is, it is not something that we intend to prove. It is something we assume, like a credit limits, right? It's uh, something that's beyond our control. It take, uh, take the way it is. So we just want to declare it as an axiom. Right? But there's another thing I want to show to you. If you're curious about exactly what is being proved, so that's so-called proof obligation. Under proof obligation, there will be a list of proof. Uh, there will be a list of Boolean predicate that that are supposed to be discharged by the prover. If you double click on that over here, okay, I will show to you how you can switch to the proofing perspective. Double click on that over here, it's going to show you zero. However, this is not the way to go, right? I want to show you here. You can see. Around over here, you can see my cursor over here, around the top right corner. If you move your mouse over that B icon, it says event B. So this is the so-called event B perspective, which is similar to the Java perspective of your Eclipse, meaning that you're only using this perspective to edit or construct your model. If you really want to explore the proof, you want to switch to another perspective called a proving perspective. How do we do that? In the very beginning, uh, in the very first time for your projects, you will have to open that perspective. So let's now click on this plus over here to open that. And then what I want to show is the proving perspective. That's the way to look at the proof tree. We'll definitely talk about uh, proof tree uh, in a mu much greater detail in other tutorial. But for the introductory one, I will, I will just show you how to switch to the proving perspective. And you can say open. Right? It's not being memorized by your GUI, your IDE. So whenever you want to edit the model, go to event B. Whenever you want to see the proof obligation, go to proving. Right? Hopefully that's clear. Pretty much like whenever you want to edit, go to Java perspective. Whenever you want to debug, go to debug perspective. All right. And you can look at that over here. The goal over here is like a consequence. That means we are trying to prove this particular theorem, which we declare, right? And this just cannot be proved because not, there's nothing that will support its uh, truthfulness. So that's why we cannot prove it, right? And we'll definitely try to see more example about what uh, what's to be proved. And for now, uh, at least you know where to uh, how to switch to the proving perspective. That's important, right? Let me go back to the event B perspective, all right? And apparently this cannot be proved. So let me go back to uh, C0 over here. If I just switch it back to not a theorem, which means it's an axiom. And then control S to save it. And now once I have I have done that, uh, we'll just say, okay, that's okay. 
And you can see the proof obligation is automatically done because now there's nothing for the proof to prove because this predicate here is a, actually an axiom which does not need to be proved. Let me put more one more comments for you. Okay, in this case, the typing constraint should be an axiom. Okay, sorry about the GUI is not really reflecting well, but you can definitely see this over here. Okay, let me, uh, I, I, you can pause the video if you want to put the comments. In this case, the typing constraint should be an axiom, not a theorem, because we don't want to prove it. All right. All right, one more thing I would like to do uh, to the context, right? And I want you to recall part of the requirements over here is specifically in, uh, environment constraint number one over here. Where, where we talk about the accounts, right? We say the bank system is really uh, concerned about accounts. So this will be something we want to get reflected in C0 as well. That's something we want to do. And how, how do we do that? We want to somehow do so-called the carrier set. I will just go there and create it and I'll uh, explain to you. And for now, if you don't need a proofing perspective, you can simply close it, okay? And let's now go back to the context over here and then right click and then you can simply say at carrier set, okay? If you go to carrier set over here, by default, it simply give you the name set one. But now I want to make a, an account, right? So the convention is the name of the carrier set should be all capitals, and okay? it should be singular over here. So we're seeing that account is actually a carrier set, which denotes the set of possible accounts in the bank. But how exactly each account structure should look like, we don't need to specify. Okay, let's say carrier set, carrier set, no need. Okay, it's, uh, it is abstract without the need to, somehow remote lab is actually shows funny, you know, when I when I type. But anyway, bear, bear with me. You can definitely pause the video when I'm done typing my content. You can follow me if you wish. Abstra uh, the carrier says actually abstract without the need to enumerate uh, contents of the set. All right, and make sure you save the model. All right, so there's one more thing I would like to do to make the context complete. I want to emphasize once more about being an axiom and or not an axiom. You want to see another example to make sure you, uh, you can see the difference. Okay, let's do it. Let's now just go under uh, axiom over here and then over here you can right click and then add a child. Let's say we want to add another axiom over here. Another axiom over here, just axiom number two. However, I intend to make this a theorem, meaning that I want to prove it, okay? So now I can say THN, that's a convention for theorem and you can make it one or you can actually uh, just uh, continue from the index one. But let me just say one. So we'll separate the namespaces between theorems and axiom. All right, so this one here, I want to say it is a theorem. So let me click on that, right? So that will become a theorem. And what theorem? I want, well, the whatever theorem I put over here, it should be either automatically true, standalone, or it should be provable, assuming all the axioms that's already declared in the current context, which is C being a natural number on net one, like a positive number. So why don't I say this? If I say C larger than zero, that's a theorem I want to put, right? Enter, and then you can see I want, we want to save the model, control S over here. As soon as I do that, you can see under proof obligation, we actually got something over here uh, theorem one, you can see THM one correspond to the label over here, which you can change if you wish. And also the THN or capital say, uh, say that this proof obligation is in the category of a theorem, THN, all right? And what exactly are we prove, uh, are we trying to prove over here? Let's now take a look at on my iPad quickly. Okay, so this is the context we have built so far over here. You can see that C zero over here. And we actually got two things over here. This is an axiom. And this is a theorem over here, right? You can see the decoration over here. Now the theorem means axiom. Let me just annotate it just to make sure you understand this because we will need this kind of concept when we build a machine as well. Not a theorem over here. So this means this is an axiom. 
No proofs needed. Okay? May be used to prove something else. May be used to prove theorems in the same context. Right? On the other hand, over here, you can see we got a theorem over here. Right? So this means a theorem. Obviously. And proof needed. And in the case of this uh, current lab, all the theorems that we declare can be automatically discharged and proved by the prover. So we don't really need to worry about uh, manual proof, but we'll worry about them maybe for the later lab. But for this lab, that's okay. All right, so what exactly is being proved over here? What you want to understand is what exactly is being proved is C being a member of natural one. And we know that this means positive number. And to be more precise, is the set of one. Well, actually, it's, uh, let's use set comprehension notation. All the number x such that x is actually a member of the net. What, or you can simply say x uh, is maybe like an integer, and x is strictly larger than zero by definition, right? And then. You want to say that this actually implies the theorem c larger than zero right you can see this is what you normally would do in ecs 1090 but now we have to know exactly this is the implication that will be uh uh generated uh based on how we specify the context over here so once you put the th uh axiom over here and then you put the theorem over here in that case the axiom should be uh you should be able, able to derive the theorem from the axiom so that's why we put an imprecation over here, right? In general, there might be more than one axiom, in which case, what the rodent proof, prover will try to do, maybe they would say axiom number one and axiom number two all the way to axiom, okay, conjunction over here, axiom n. That will imply maybe each of the theorems. So maybe they'll try to discharge maybe theorem one first, and then there might be just, an, uh, this might be just uh, the general form. And then, uh, so these were called hypothesis. So these are the hypothesis. So let me just put hypothesis. Hypotheses. So since we got so many, and also we got over here, that's called a goal to be proved. Right? That's uh, the general form. You will definitely see the pattern as well for the case of a machine, where we declare variables and also other theorems, uh, also invariants. All right, enough about the axiom versus theorem. I hope that's crystal clear to you, I hope. But otherwise, you can reach out to me. We can discuss. All right, that's about the complete model I would like to have for the context for you. And one more remark, if I may. You can see over here, for the constant over here, we did not say what its value should be. In fact, we don't have to, right? Remember I said before, since now we are talking about like a formal method over here, in that case, we will, we can simply prove properties holding on all the possible com uh, combination of C. In that case, C uh, does, does, not, does not really need to hold for a particular value for testing. We don't need to, right? In the case of Java programming, we have to, but in the case of formal model and proving, we don't need to. As long as we, knew, we know it's a typing constraint, in which case it's going to, uh, when we prove it, it's going to consider all the possible values for n1, all the posi positive numbers. That's really the beauty about proving things as opposed to testing things. All right, that's about it. Let's now move on to the second part, uh, well, the next part for the uh, tutorial to talk about how we can construct another kind of model, which will be abstract state machine.